Hey guys, Eitan here from Bavegang Sound Design. Today we'll do a quick overview of the audio restoration tools in the Adobe Premiere Essential Sound Panel. To open it, simply click the audio tab. In this video, we'll focus on the dialogue section. The dialogue section is divided into loudness, repair, clarity, and creative. In each one of these, we have buttons and sliders that can help us balance and clean dialogue from background noises, hiss, clicks, reverb, and other unwanted sounds. So before we dive in, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe. So let's start with AutoMatch, which is in the loudness section. AutoMatch can help you balance multiple clips in just one click. So let's listen to these two clips. Are you having trouble finding one? Meet Maple. With us, it is so easy and safe to work with the perfect, validated, and experienced so that's the first one, which you can see is a little less loud than the other one. Let's listen to the other one. Way. Maple will help you work with the perfect vetted experts. For the first one is quite low, as you can hear and also see in the meter. Meet Maple. With us, it is so easy and... And the other one is much louder. Work with the perfect vetted experts for your... So I'm selecting the two clips and clicking the auto match button. As you can see, the loud clip is toned down and the quiet one is boosted. So this is before and this is after. So let's listen to it now. An experienced digital marketer for you and your business. Join us. We've you work with the perfect vetted experts for your brand. All right, so it's much better. Let's move on to the repair tab. The first slider, reduce noise, is probably the one that you're looking for if you have too much noise on your recording, but it's the most distractive one, so you should be very careful with it. The more you push it up, the more you lose clarity. So the goal here is to find the best balance between noise reduction and artifact. I'm going to use another sequence for this example, right? I'm going to... here we have some clips that are very noisy. Well, hey there, my fellow fashionistas. Right, so we have some rumbling sounds, we have some noise in the background. It all started. We have some hum, which we are going to remove using the essential panel. Right, so let's select these clips, clicking dialog, and let's try on the first clip that reduce noise. Well, hey there, my fellow fashionistas. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard of reshoring? If you haven't, you move. All right, and now we have some rumbling sound. Well, hey there, my fellow fashionists. If you have large speakers, you can probably hear the rumbling sound in this audio clip. So I'm going to use reduce rumble to see how it works. And you can actually see how it says reduce low frequency sounds and plosives. All right, so let's enable that. Take the slider to zero. Well, hey there, my fellow fashionistas. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard of reshoring? If you haven't, well, hey there, my fellow fashionistas. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard of reshoring? If you haven't, you most likely. Well, hey there, my fellow fashionistas. All right, so if you do have big speakers, you can hear a slight, a very subtle change, all right? It's not very significant, I'm afraid. So let's move on to the DHUM slider. Let's remove the reduced noise and reduce rumble for this clip. Now, DHUM is for those buzzing noises in your recording that sounds like that. The DHUM tool is basically an equalizer with notch filters that remove just the noisy frequencies and leave everything else alone. 50 or 60 is the fundamental frequency, and I won't go into a deep explanation about it, but basically it's related to the electricity system in your country. So 50 is usually good for the UK and Europe, and 60 is good for the US and Canada. So let's listen to this clip have no idea what I had to go through to get here. So you can clearly hear the hum noise in the background. And I'm going to use 50, enable the hum, take the slider to zero and start increasing. Help. You have no idea what I had to go through to get here. All right, it doesn't work, so let's try 60. It all starts. And it completely removes 
the harm noise. Glad to help. You have no idea what I had to go through to get here. It all started in a lab. The next one is the deesser, which removes strong S syllables. So we have a very strong S here. It all started in it all started in Let's try to attenuate it using the deesser. It all started in a lab. It all started in a It all started in a lab. It all started in a All right, so it's a little better, not a very dramatic change. And the last one is the reduce reverb. I made a whole video tutorial where I compared different D-Reverb tools using Premiere, Audition and Isotope RX. So if you want to dive deeper into it, I'll leave a link in the description. So listen to this recording. Hey guys, as a sound designer, I can't count the number of times I received recordings with a lot of echo or reverb, which really sounds bad. This is a good example of why you should never record in a corridor. There's a lot of reverb here, so let's use the D reverb and listen to what it can do. Hey guys, first of all, before that, I'm going to reduce a little bit of noise. Hey guys, as a sound designer, I can't count the number of times I received it's already better and reduce reverb. Hey guys, as a sound designer, I can't count the number of times I received recordings with a lot of echo or... Hey guys, as a sound designer, I can't count the number of times I received... Alright, so let's listen to it before. Recordings with a lot of echo and after. Or reverb, which really sounds bad. This is a good example of why you should never record in a corridor. Alright, so it's a little better. The next section is clarity. I'm going to use another clip for this. So I'm going to clarity. Here you can find the dynamic slider, which is another word for compression, and an EQ. We also have a very detailed tutorial on compression and EQ, but let's just listen to what we can do with this. Success. No matter how we choose to define it, we all pursue it searching for that one road that leads us there. But the truth is, there is no road. No straight line from startup to you. All right, so we get a little compression, right? So that's good. It gives us a little more presence, a little bit of loudness, which is good. All right, so let's listen to it before. No matter how we choose to define it, we all pursue it, searching for that one road that leads us there. And after. All right, now the EQ here is actually for creative purposes and we have all these nice presets. Intercom locked in a trunk, let's just listen to it. Inter but the truth is there is no road, no straight line from startup to- All right, so that's really good, right? Locked in the trunk. Unicorn. The truth is there is no road, no straight line. As you can see here is the curve of the EQ. We have a very strong shelf on the high frequencies, old radio from startup to unicorn on the phone. Each that one road that leads us there. But the truth is, there is no road, no straight line from startup to unicorn. All right, so this is very, very useful. I actually really like this uh, section here of the EQ. We also have the enhanced speech, which I think simply boosts high and low frequencies searching for that one road that leads us there. But the truth is, there is no road, no straight line from startup to unicorn. Ah, it's okay. Now, under creative, we have reverb. Adding reverb can help you simulate a space. So for example, if you want to put your character in an auditorium, you have a special preset for that. Do it. Searching for that one road that leads us there. But the truth is, there is no road, no straight line. For Interesting, right? And you have other presets, church. One road that leads us there. But the truth is, there is no road, no straight line from startup to unicorn. Warm room. That leads us there. But the truth is. So for example, if you have to 
replace a production recording with a studio recording, which is called ADR, Automatic Dialogue Replacement, then it's very useful to use a room reverb preset. It can really help you make the dialogue seem like it really comes out of a real place and not a studio. All right, so... We all pursue it, searching for that one road that leads us there. But the truth is, there is no road. It's nice, it's good. That's the reverb, and at the very bottom, you have the clip volume, where you can boost or decrease the loudness of the clip, and mute. That's it, quite simple. Now, I'll give you my personal opinion in it. I think that the fact that Adobe managed to make these tools so accessible and so easy to use is just ingenious. I wish Avid, for example, would be half as innovative as Adobe. Using the Essential panel can make your videos sound much better. Having said that, before making this tutorial, I tried using these tools instead of the usual high-level sound editing tools that I use. And as a sound designer, the results are not sufficient. No reservation tool in the repair section can outperform the Isotope RX modules, for example. We covered that in a tutorial I made about how to reduce echo, and you can cl clearly hear the difference. The dynamic slider, in my opinion, is way less accurate than using a simple compressor plugin, and the EQ booster, for example, isn't quite like using an EQ. But as I said before, using these tools are free to use, you don't have to pay extra for them, and it's better than nothing. So this is a great thing that Adobe is doing. Another great thing I want you to know is Bavegang Sound Design. We are a sound studio, and we provide astonishing sound design for commercial videos. We edit your voice track, add amazing sound effects, and create a perfect mix. We have fixed prices, which you can check on our website, and a free quick steps ordering process. Bring your video to the next level with Bavegang Sound Design. I'll add a link in the description. So that's it for today. See you next time.